We are joined now by former Titleist, the one and only Showtime, Sean Porter. Sean, thank you. <laughs> Listen, I see, like, you not only know, you know about microphone placement because in your retirement, you are now a podcaster yeah, yourself. Yeah, and tell us and about that. Watch my podcast, you'll see me moving my mic all the time. <laughs> my, my friends, I'm a fidgeter, you know okay. what I mean? So when I'm, on, when I'm on TV, I've always got a pen in my hand, I'm always fidgeting. So when I do my podcast, the Porterway podcast, YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, all the podcast platforms. I'm always moving around, and the mic is the main thing. So. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's a good job. Uh, you know how to plug your podcast, right? Yeah. That, and yet you're constantly, unintentionally plugging our podcast, Showtime Boxing, because anytime someone says your name, they're plugging our podcast. So really, everybody wins. I'm trying to keep up with your numbers. That's the main thing at this point. How do I make my numbers look like Showtime numbers? I, I, I got I the name. I got to add the numbers to it. I assume you're, you're catching up quickly with the Sean Porter name catching behind up. you. So, so how is retirement? Uh, tweet, treating you in general it's great uh it's it's relaxing to be able to just kind of live life and not have the stresses of being a professional athlete uh on me you know it people don't know it it's it's fun but it can be a bearing a, a, a bearing a, a, a burden excuse me to to you know kind of live that lifestyle uh as strict as i lived it for as long as i did um you know i put the numbers together about 26 years mm. as a fighter 13 as an amateur and then 13 as a pro you know what i mean so um i'm happy where i'm at and uh, i have no intentions on going back <laughs> anything you miss or not yet uh you know what i i can't lie um my main thing as a fighter was i i loved fight night and i loved coming out and seeing the crowd i was at gervonta davis and roley Romero this past weekend and I'm looking around, I'm just like, damn, like, I'll never have this again, you right, know? So right. I got to figure out a way to recreate that. I, I remember talking to some boxer, I don't remember who it was, who always said to me, that ring walk, that's what separates the men from the boys, right? Either you mm, love it, yeah. or you walk out and the crowds yeah. are there and you're like, oh my God, yeah. is that fair? It's, uh, for me, it was something I, I always look forward to. When I came out, I wanted the, the, the crowd, the, the, the arena to be full. And uh, that you can see any fight you see me when I'm walking, I'm looking around, just to make yeah. sure every every seat is full. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's not really the ring walk that separates the men from the boys, but probably fight night. In fight night, yeah. When you wake up and you know it's that yeah. it's that day, that's what that's what separates. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I believe I've heard you say that going into the fight with Terence Crawford. You were thinking about retiring, win or lose. Was, yeah. was that right? It was. It was yeah. already pretty I, much on your mind. I won that fight. I was going to retire. It was a draw. I was going to retire. Obviously, the letter happened. Um, I I already had. I had goals uh, when I turned pro, and I achieved all of those goals. And then, um, you know, Errol Smith Jr. I thought he was going to be my last fight. Mm. After I fought him, hearing people want to see me get in the ring with Terence Crawford, I said, "All right." One more, and once I get him, then I'm done. You know. So. So even if you had knocked Terrence Crawford out and it sets you up for a mega payday with yeah. somebody else, yeah. and it wasn't. Yeah. I just, honestly, man, um, this is not the only way you can make money, mm. and uh, I'm ready to make money a different way. Uh, I know that I've there, I have other talents, and I'm ready to put those talents to use. You know. Mm. So. That's that's it in a nutshell. If, if you're looking at podcasting to stay rich, we should probably talk quietly. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, more, I have more than the podcast going. Uh, thankfully, you know. Uh, uh, but the we, podcast, we, do too. we totally, yeah, we totally. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast is going well, and it, and it, it actually it, it's as fun as I hoped it would be, and it's going exactly as I expected it to go. Nice, nice. Yeah. Have you had a chance to look back in your career and think like this was my favorite night or my favorite fight or, or this was the best moment? Not until people ask. Oh, okay. I, you know the it, so what I've really done is just kind of look back on my overall everything that I've done. Um, I was an alternate at the Olympic Games in 2008 in China. Uh, I was the uh, representative for the United States at the Pan American Games in Brazil. I've traveled to Venezuela. I've traveled to Morocco, uh, under-19 world championship tournaments. Uh, I fought against Alexander Usyk, which a lot of people 
are like blown away <laughs> by. Right, right, yeah. Uh, what were, were your respective York, weights at the time you fought? One sixty-five. And you oh, were the, so yeah. you're the same, wow. yeah, same weight yeah. at the time. Okay. And, I, and I mean, you know, just when you take a look at the overall landscape of what I've been able to accomplish, that's just as an amateur. Right. You go on to everything I've done, I've done as a pro, which I think most people have seen. Um, it, it, it's it's very special, and I think that it was time well spent uh, in the ring. Now you think about the things I'm doing outside of the ring, amateurboxingchampions.com. I just named everything I did as an amateur. You, I don't know if you guys knew mm. that or not, mm. but I'm creating a way for the, to, to magnify the amateur boxing champions right. who are going to be the next world champions mm. on a professional level. You ask Roy Jones Jr. Like it started as an amateur. People right. know 10% of what he did, 5% of what he did as an amateur. You know him to get robbed at the Olympic Games in Korea. Mm. Uh, outside of that, you don't know anything about him. You know, right. you know Harley, you very little about me as an amateur, and the list goes on. All of the greats were amateurs, and so I'm going to start um, uh, uh, broadcasting and, 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 and putting spotlight on the amateur program. Excellent, mm-hmm. excellent. And what, what about training? Is that potentially in your future? Training fighters? Training something? fighters? Yeah. So I kind of I, I learned a lot from my dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of time. Not for just the athlete, but also for the fighter. Mm. And uh, that's that's kind of the silent agreement I've made with myself. When a fighter approaches me and feels that he wants me to train him, and I think that I can, I can, you know, help that fighter become successful. My main thing is I want to be able to give that fighter 100%. And if I if I'm in a position to give that fighter that time that he needs, I'll go for it. But mm. at this present time. I definitely don't think I have the time. Okay. For it. okay. Yeah. So we we have to ask you. I'm. Sh- I don't know if you're already sick of getting asked about this potential fight coming up, but we got to get your insight oh, on yeah. it. You know what's coming. Terence Crawford, Errol Spence. What what are your thoughts on it? Who do, who would you favor in well, that who, one? Who, what network gets this fight? You know, I think that that's to, that's the to be to be determined. To be determined. You know. So um, I think uh, I'm, I'm definitely keep a lot of my opinions reserved for that fight to be announced. Um, you're going to get scru- scrutinized if you pick mm. Crawford. You're going to get scrutinized if you pick Spence. And so I don't want that to start any sooner than it needs to start. <laughs> well, that was, a really long, that was a really long no comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. we got to ask you before you go, we're here at the Hall of Fame. Not just one, but three classes yeah. all coming in. I mean, how has this experience been for you so far already? Um, great. Just to kind of show up and everybody say, Sean Porter's here and just kind of head my way. I, it's it's great, man. Um, I'm 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 very uh, grateful and appreciative that I get to be in this position and to see three uh, years going in. My main thing is, ah, oh, this induction is gonna be a long one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But outside of that, man, to see who's going in is is amazing. To get all these fighters in one year is amazing. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and the interaction, there's something about boxing fans, isn't there, in boxes? There's like a closeness here. Yeah. Like the accessibility here is yeah. fantastic. You, boxing is a, it's, 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 we're a family, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, I'm seeing people here that I've seen in New York and I've seen in Vegas. And, you know, so it, it, we're all a family. And at the end of the day, uh, there's nothing but love yeah. surrounding this sport. And I, I think that that's the thing, one thing about this sport that you know, other sports lack. Yeah. The community. Well, yeah, very much. Well, I'm glad to hear that uh, retirement uh, suits you well so yeah, far. Yeah. And, uh, of course, best of luck with your podcast. Thank I hope you. it's the number two boxing podcast <laughs> in the world before long. I, I hope so, too. <laughs> and, then, and then from there, right. you know what happens. Exactly. We'll be looking over our shoulder. There you go. Thanks so much, Sean. Great catching up with you. Yes, sir. Absolutely.